Hey, thank you guys so very much. I, uh, I appreciate it. I love being here. I actually grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, Calgary, Alberta is world famous for what's called the Calgary Stampede. And a lot of people think that's why I'm nicknamed the Iron Cowboy, but I'm actually allergic to horses and hay. And so uh, I was actually given the nickname when I used to wear a cowboy hat during the marathon portion of my races. I've got five little kids and uh, they wanted to see dad coming because we all look the same out there. Now really quick, what an Ironman is, is it's a 2.4 mile swim and this thing is chaos when you get in there. I didn't realize how intense it was gonna be. I got kicked in the face. I got punched, I got swam over top of him. In fact, I got pulled down into the water in that moment and I had to learn how to relax to remove chaos in order to progress. And after that, it's the bike ride, 112 miles. And this, this, every single race still today, that bully inside of my head comes out about mile 80 and lets me know how stupid I am. <laughs> how what I'm doing is difficult and I still have a full 26.2 mile marathon run to go. Now this total, NBC, NBC Sports calls this the most difficult single day in sports. It totals 140.6 miles. And I know every single one of you is saying, if this is the result, what are you doing? Why do you do this on purpose? But it's not this moment, it's this one. And in this moment, everything goes away. The pain, the sacrifice, the energy, the effort, it all becomes worth it. And I wanted to have that experience as often as I could. And so I set out with my family to break multiple Guinness World Records the most half Ironmans in a year, the most full Ironmans in a year. 30 Ironmans through 11 countries. They said it was impossible. But we broke that world record and there's so many stories that I usually share in my keynote that I just don't have time to do today. And after that journey, I knew there was more. As we have life experiences, we change and more becomes possible. And so I announced 50 Ironmans, 50 days in 50 states. That's an Ironman a day, no days off. I found a little team that believed in me. It was my five kids. <laughs> two, two friends that we called the wingmen, Casey and Aaron, and my wife, Sunny. And we started in Hawaii, went to Alaska, and the motorhome met us in Washington where we started to cover the lower 48. As a team, we averaged less than four hours of sleep a night. I had to consume 12,000 calories a day in order to fuel the effort. And I promise you, we were met with chaos and confusion every single day. We had a brilliant reason to quit and abandon every single day. But persistence and resilience only come from having been given an opportunity to face difficult problems. Now, if you're facing difficulty in your life right now, like most people are, some level of anxiety, depression, I wanna say congratulations. It's actually an opportunity. It's a great place to be because if we choose to fight, if we choose to show up every single day, we're going to learn, we're going to adapt, we're going to evolve, we're going to grow. This life doesn't get easier, this journey did not get easier, we just got stronger and more resilient. To grow, to adapt, and to evolve, we need to become uncomfortable intentionally. Only then will we meet the best version of ourselves and truly find out what we can accomplish. Now I ask you this, when was the last time you intentionally became uncomfortable? When was the last time you faced your fears, broke them down into a manageable piece to overcome them? Fear is just an emotion, yet it's paralyzing us as a society. I woke up every single day on the 50, no idea was gonna happen, and I promise you I got to the moment where I didn't know if I could take the next step. I'll take it off. <laughs> <laughs> where every step you take, it feels like a nail gun is being driven through your foot, but that next step, that next step is the most important step, and it's a step that very few people have the courage to take. But on the other side of that step is growth, it's change, and it's amazing. There's so many experiences that I've had that I share with the audiences around the world. I've had an opportunity to speak in 52 countries. And every time I speak, I get the same question, how do I become more mentally tough? And it's about believing in yourself, getting out of your own way, winning those conversations that you had. Now, the pandemic happened, it changed the world changed how we operated. I saw it as an opportunity. I wanted to, to do everything better in the, and redo the mistakes that I'd made in the past. So I woke up and I said to my wife, I said, what if we doubled what everybody thought was impossible? What if we showed up and did 100 consecutive Ironmans, 14,000 miles an Ironman a day for a quarter of a year, could we do it? They said, yeah, let's do it, let's have some fun. So on March 1st, 2021, it was 18 degrees outside on the very first day, we were gonna set sports endurance history. We weren't gonna redefine a possible, we were gonna defy logic. I've never been so cold in my life. It was 18 degrees. By day number five, I had an ankle injury that swelled up into my shins. I was developing stress fractures. I was staring down the barrel of 95 more to go and I was already broken. By day 59, we broke our own world record. I was in an accident, I was knocked unconscious. 
And as I was laying there on the ground, Aaron, one of the wingmen, he says, James, have we finished what we started? And I said, no. He said, James, are you setting the best example you know how for your kids? I said, no. He said, have we raised the money we've set out to raise for human trafficking, the epidemic today? And I said, no. And he said, get back on your bike. It's time to ride. You have to know why you're doing something and the purpose has to be greater than yourself. I found out later that I broke my back in that accident. I did 41 consecutive Ironmans with a broken back and I could do that because my focus and attention wasn't on the pain. It was on freeing human beings that were being sex trafficked. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try today. That was an actual video from day 80 when I was completely broken mentally, physically, spiritually. I did not believe I could continue. And there's going to be moments on all of our journeys, no matter who we are and what we're doing, that's going to seem impossible. And all we can do on those days is just get up and try. And I look back at this moment and my decision to continue. And from that moment to today, we've raised over a million dollars that has gone to free human beings from being sex trafficked. And I, I question all the time, what, what would have happened if I quit in that moment? It still would have been a world record. We still would have set sports history. But I wouldn't have had the impact that I wanted to have on that day. Now, we made it to day 100, and it was unbelievable. And people from around the world came to join us for that last day. And my family was there to greet us at the finish line because we'd sacrificed so much together. It's my wife and my five kids. And everybody thought we were going to go home and celebrate. But we made a decision that we were going to get up and we were going to do one more. Because I'll never get on any stage around the world, never, and tell people they can do it one more time if I didn't do it myself. And sometimes you're going to have to do it by yourself and face that adversity and that, the objections that we have. This is my family at the end of the 50 and at the end of 100, and we share so many stories. But my favorite one is about a boy. His name is Dayton. He's got a condition that's called cerebral palsy. And this was back in the 2012 world record. And... Uh, I found out through social media. He loves to do triathlons. He loves to feel the wind in his face. It makes him feel alive. And so I, we set it up, and I got to meet Dayton for the very first time in Lake Havasu, Arizona, on race 27 of 30 in that year. And I was scared. I'd, I'd, never, I'd never done an Ironman with a boy before. I've never pulled anybody in a race. And his dad walks up, and he throws down this $20 boat from Walmart, and I get terrified. <laughs> And then he leans in and he says, James, I don't want you to worry about a thing. Dayton might have a seizure. If he does, just keep swimming. And then the gun goes off and I'm like, what the hell are we doing? And so I grab the rope. I tie it around my waist. I jump in. I'm swimming. And I'm swimming as hard as I can. Every chance I get back, I look back and I'm wondering, is Dayton okay? Is he having that seizure? And every time I look back, I could see him. His eyes were closed. And I'm like, that son of a gun, he's taking a nap. <laughs> he's totally fine. And then it hit me. In life, we look so far ahead in the future, it's always the worst case scenario. And we live there and it's taking away all of our energy and distracting us from accomplishing what we need to in that moment. So I came back to that moment. I started to swim as hard as I can. We came out of the group in the middle of the pack. His dad greeted us with a special cart, special for Dayton. Our definition of custom was different. This was 185 pounds of U.S. grade steel. But we got that thing up to speed and we started going 27 miles an hour. And this time when I looked back, what do you think I saw? Smile. Yeah, I saw Dayton with the biggest smile on his face, and I said, yes, this is exactly what I'm supposed to do, and this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And then, unfortunately, at mile 30, Dayton's cart breaks. Where it was connected to my bike, it slipped. I go from 27 miles an hour down to four, and I'm giving it everything I've got. My wife's super concerned that we've been taking too long. She comes out to start to ride with us. We don't know why. We'll call it inspiration. She reached out her hand. She put it on the back of Dayton's cart. As soon as she touched the cart, it took away that shake. My speed doubled. My cadence picked up. I looked back at my wife. I said, Sonny, how long can you leave your hand there? And she said, as long as you need, if it's helping. I said, I, I think I need you for the next six hours. <laughs> but together, we pushed and pulled Dayton up and down the hills of Lake Havasu until we had six miles to go, and the sun sets, and the race director stopped us. He said, it's no longer safe to continue. And we were devastated. And then a police officer came up, and he turned on all of his lights. He looked right at, right at us, and he said, boys, follow me. I'm going to give you your chance to run your marathon. And I want to share with you a, a video of the day that Dayton and I got to spend together. There are many limits in life, but the only limit to achieving greatness is telling yourself no. 
On the surface, I was pulling Dayton, but in reality, he was pulling me. He was the mind, I was the body, and together we were a machine. It became the hardest ride of my life. Every pedal stroke was like climbing a mountain. I kept doing the math over and over in my head. We weren't gonna make it. But I kept telling myself, Dayton can't ride a bike. And I get to ride my bike today. I get to ride my bike. I looked back and I realized he wasn't gonna cross the finish line unless I took that next step. simply push the limits hard. I kept telling myself, Dayton can't run, and I get to run tonight. Greatness isn't measured in hours, minutes, or seconds. It's measured in your ability to kick your limits to the curb and achieve what is possible. Dayton. Thank you. Dayton can't ride a bike. I get to ride my bike today. Dayton can't run, and I get to run tonight. I kept saying that over and over my head because I truly believe that we have no idea when something's going to be taken away from us. And I wake up every single day, every morning. I put my hand over my heart and I take a deep breath of fresh air. And I put my feet on the ground and I say, I get to do it one more time today. And I know that nothing great is ever accomplished on our own. Dayton and I, we needed each other. We needed my wife, Sunny, to come out and reach out her hand. That police officer to light our way. That was Dayton's mother, who ran every step of the marathon with us. And it took my two oldest girls to run us into the finish line. Every single one of us put that medal around Dayton's neck. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I had to share with Dayton on that day. And it's still lessons that I carry with me over 10 years later. This is my family, and we've been on a journey together of over 20 years that we like to share. And we take audiences through a roller coaster ride of emotion. And a lot of times you'll listen to speakers and you won't necessarily remember what they said, but I promise you, you'll remember how they made you feel. And as I go around the world now through 52 countries, I'm blessed and fortunate have brought my family with me through this journey to watch my kids grow, to adapt, to evolve, and to become incredible people. I challenge you to have hope in your life, because that's the number one thing that I've realized as I've gone on this journey is that we lack hope. And I believe that hope is life and excuses are death. And with every audience that I've had an opportunity to present to, they leave with that hope. Because I'm not speaking to engineers or accountants or NFL football players. I'm talking to human beings. And every human being has a heart and a mind. And they did, at the end of the day, it does. It gives them hope and it removes excuses. And that's what I'll do with every single one of the audiences that I get an opportunity to speak in front of. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I got to share our message with you today. Thank you.